TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Palestinian Islamists indiscriminately launch over 3,150 rockets toward Israeli civilian communities, all the while vowing to step up hostilities. Israel targets over 950 militant targets in the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip, all the while highlighting its efforts to avoid harming uninvolved Palestinian civilians. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan calls his Iranian counterpart Hassan al-Khani to discuss the need to give Israel a strong and deterrent lesson over hostilities vis-à-vis -vis the Gaza Strip. The conflict on Israel's southern front with the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip continues to exact a toll from both sides. Since the start of hostilities over a week ago, Palestinian Islamists launched indiscriminately over 3,150 rockets and counting toward Israeli civilian communities. However, according to the IDF spokesperson's unit, out of the total number of rockets fired, 460 projectiles failed to cross into Israeli territory. Instead, these exploded within the Palestinian enclave, including on densely populated areas which claimed the lives of innocent Palestinian civilians. Separately, as of this moment, at least 10 civilians and one soldier were killed in Israel, including two Arab and seven Jewish citizens, and one Indian national who served as a caregiver to an 80-year-old Holocaust survivor who also sustained injuries. And while the deadly rocket fire, which is abhorrently directed at civilian communities in Israel, continues, Hamas political chief Ismail Haniya declared at a rally in Qatar that his organization has much more in store in its war against Israel. Separately, the Israeli military, or IDF, continues to strike at the Islamist Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad organizations in Gaza, exacting a significant toll of both military infrastructure and Islamist operatives. According to the latest information attained by TV7 today, the IDF confirmed that it struck over 820 terror targets and neutralized and targeted assassinations above 130 militants, including senior Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad operatives. According to Gazan health authorities, which are controlled by Hamas, at least 197 Palestinians have been killed in Israeli bombardments, However, international humanitarian organizations present in Gaza could not immediately confirm to TV7 whether these numbers are accurate. Meanwhile, following a situation assessment conducted by Jerusalem's top defense and political leadership, IDF Chief of General Staff, Lieutenant General Aviv Kochavi emphasized that while the Israeli military is doing everything in its power to avert uninvolved casualties, the IDF is first and foremost tasked with ensuring the safety of the citizens of Israel. הדבר השלישי הוא כמובן יכולת התקיפה המאוד מאוד מדויקת שיש לנו ואנחנו עושים הכל כדי לא לפגוע בבלתי מעורבים אם כי לא פעם זה לא פשוט אבל אנחנו עושים את הכל כדי להבטיח את סיכול האיומים על אזרחי מדינת ישראל. 
General Kochavi also listed the significant strategic achievements which the IDF managed to exact from the Islamist Hamas organization in Gaza, the most significant of which included a deceptive tactic which was employed by the IDF over the weekend when an IDF spokesperson vaguely alluded to a ground operation causing international news agencies to broadcast the beginning of an Israeli cross-border incursion. Consequently, Hamas operatives and its allies sought out defensive positions within a subterranean network referred to as the Gazan Metro. At that same moment, approximately 160 Israeli aircraft from 12 squadrons struck over 150 underground targets, while in parallel, ground forces, artillery and armored troops deployed along the border, fired hundreds of artillery shells and dozens of tank shells against the same metro tunnel system. It remains unclear how many Hamas operatives were killed in this Israeli attack. However, Israeli intelligence indicates that hundreds of the Islamist militants were present in the so-called metro when the Israeli bombardment ensued, drawing praise from Jerusalem's top defense leadership. <laughs> הפך את רשת המינור העזתי, מנהרות האמלח, מסתורי, המסתורים התת קרקעיים למלכודת מוות. ממטרו של חמאס לרכבת של גיהנום. זהו הישג אסטרטגי במלחמה בחמאס, שתופס שובר את התפיסה שלו, את תורת הלחימה שלו. Defense Minister Gantz also seized the opportunity to re-emphasize Jerusalem's goal of returning quiet and security to the citizens of Israel. It also emphasized the crucial need to ensure that internal fighting within Israeli, Arab and mixed communities comes to an immediate end. <laughs> כשר הביטחון אני קובע כי הקינו חזק ונמשיך להכות חזק בחמאס וננצח את המערכה בעזה. אבל חשוב לא פחות שננצח במלחמה על הבית. Prime Minister B. Netanyahu for his part highlighted that the Israeli campaign in Gaza is far from over while further voicing thanks to many nations around the world for vigorously supporting Israel's right for self-defense. מדברים על הלחץ הבינלאומי, תמיד יש לחצים, אבל בסך הכל אנחנו מקבלים גיבוי רציני מאוד. קודם כל גיבוי מארצות הברית, אני רוצה להודות שוב לידידנו הנשיא ג'ו ביידן, וגם למדינות רבות אחרות שבאמת עשו צעדים בלתי, בלתי מקובלים, כמו הנפת דגלי ישראל על בתי הממשל שלהם, אנחנו מאוד מעריכים זאת. ויש סיבה לתמיכה הזאת, משום שאחרי התקפות נפשעות כאלה על ירושלים, על ערי ישראל, בניסיון להרוג אזרחי ישראל חפים מפשע, יש לנו גיבוי בינלאומי ואנחנו משתמשים בו, וגם בזכות הטבעית שלנו להגנה עצמית. Prime Minister Netanyahu referred, among others, to the unprecedented act of support by the Czech Republic, Slovenia and Austria, which raised Israeli flags on the government buildings, as well as the latter, which raised the Israeli flag also on the building, which ironically hosts the negotiations over Iran's nuclear file, consequently drawing outrage from Iranian officials. Nevertheless, the Austrian leadership under the guidance of Chancellor Sebastian Kurz is seemingly unimpressed by anti-Israeli sentiments, condemnations or threats. But after the situation in Israel continues, uh, ist es mir auch ein persönliches Anliegen, noch einmal klarzumachen, dass wir alle Angriffe auf Israel, insbesondere diese terroristischen Raketenangriffe auf Israel, aufs Schärfste verurteilen. Der Staat Israel hat ein Recht, sich hier selbst zu verteidigen. Und ich hoffe sehr, dass es hier zu einer Deeskalation kommt und auf diese Gewalt gegen Israel verzichtet wird und diese Aktionen und Angriffe auch mit sofortiger Wirkung eingestellt werden. Alles andere ist äh, ein Verbrechen gegenüber den Menschen in Israel, äh, ist aber auch ähm, eine massive Belastung für die ohnehin angespannte Region. 
In contrast to the Austrian chancellor, not all of Israel's closest allies are keen on vocally supporting the Jewish state's right to self-defense, instead voicing a more neutral stance by highlighting the need for immediate de-escalation. I, th I certainly think that everybody in the world wants to see an end to a, the, to a cycle of, uh, of reprisals and, uh, and retaliation. They want to see de-escalation. They want to see uh, both sides sitting down and talking it through uh, and stopping the violence. Absolutely. That's, that's a message the UK is conveying. Separately in Turkey, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan voices a more hostile tone toward Israel. In repeated statements in support of the Islamist organizations in Gaza, the Turkish leader warned the international community that unless they do something about Israel, it will one day have its consequences. Alongside repeated threats and condemnations directed at Israel, the Turkish leader also held a phone conversation with his Iranian counterpart, Hassan Rouhani, during which Erdogan stated, quote, Turkey has reacted to Israel's attacks and oppressions in Palestine in the strongest manner and it continues to do so, while further stressing that the international community must give Israel a strong and deterrent lesson regarding the attacks it recklessly carries out and that the Islamic world must unite for this purpose in words and deeds. Thank you for watching us. I would like to encourage you today to join TV7 Israel and me in fervently praying for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel, alongside prayers for the salvation and peace of the United Kingdom, as well as for our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you a Shavuot Tovu Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.